They're ready with the whistles and this 22,000 capacity crowd is ready to roar. They've been cheering since they awakened this morning. And most of them are here to cheer against the favorite, the Duke Blue Devils. And Duke has it first. Jason Williams and Coverdale will be the matchup there. That's a tough test for Coverdale with a bad ankle. And the interception by Jeffries on the cross court pass. And here come the Hoosiers in the red. Nick Duke had 19 turnovers against uh, Notre Dame the other day and also gave up 19 offensive rebounds. They had to be the two points of a set emphasis for Mike Krzyzewski practicing this week. First foul, Dante Jones of Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils knocking down Fife as he tried to fight through with a screen. No, they're going to call it on Carlos Boozer. That's worse yet for Krzyzewski just into the game. The one man they can ill afford to lose their big man inside Boozer. This is Fife, Coverdale, Williams on him, Hawking. Jared Odell gets Dunleavy. And Carlos Boozer with Jared Jeffries. You got to look for Indiana to go inside to Jeffries. There it is, the pass. And it's Jeffries against Boozer. Back outside to Hornsby. Odell, tough defense. And a good pass to Hornsby. Can't hit the layup. Here comes Dunleavy the other way. He's going to fire from three. And the rebound to Hornsby of Indiana, stolen away. And Duhan gets two on the steal. Well, there's no way that Indiana can afford those kinds of errors. Their margin for error will be very slim against Duke, who was so explosive. And you got to look for some smothering defense here by Duke. They're going to make it very tough to enter the ball into Jared Jeffries, or at least try to. And a foul away from the ball, and this one against Indiana is Coverdale with an illegal pick. Take a look at the end line here as Hornsby loses the ball, but oh, the back right leg of Chris Duhon clearly out of bounds. And no basket. They have corrected it. No basket. I was going to say, generally, officials right on those baselines that usually get that call right. So much noise here. The scoreboard had registered the two. No score. And then the half into this regional Sweet 16 battle in the south as Dante Jones takes it inside. Here's Jason Williams. Good fake on Coverdale. And can't hit the jumper. Out of bounds, last touch by Jared Jeffries of Indiana. Indiana's perimeter players very good at containing players on the dribble plus challenging shot. They're going to have to be very good against. Guys like Duhon, Dante Jones, and in particular, Jason Williams. Oh, inbounds pass to Dunleavy for the easy two and the foul. And between Odell and Fife, they lost Dunleavy. Jeffries ticketed with a foul. Oh, one of the first things that goes up on the scouting report's got to be Duke on underneath out of bounds plays, especially Mike Dunleavy, whether it's against man to man or zone. Very clever at finding the open areas, and he gets a lot of easy baskets that way. Dunleavy making the first team All America on the coach's ballot. This is the three point opportunity. 2 0 Duke. Jeffries comes outside. Almost a steal by Dunleavy. No foul. Over. Almost handcuffed Fife, and there's the steal. Two already for Duke. They average 10 a game. Williams working for the 10 footer, not there. Tipped around, and Duke battles, and Dunleavy at 6 9. Gives the Blue Devils another chance. Well, Indiana's going to have to take better care of the basketball. It's going to be difficult because Duke put so much pressure on the ball handler and the passer. They don't let you get a good look. They make you turn your back to the intended guy that you want to get the ball to. Two nothing Blue Devils. Dunleavy draws a crowd. Dante Jones open for three. Both teams pulled off the start. Two nothing. Indiana yet to score with 2:40 gone in this opening half. Odell underneath working against Dunleavy and the Indiana fans wanted a foul. Dunleavy at the other end. Fife the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year on him. What gives away five inches. Coverdale as Dunleavy goes down and no foul. They're letting them play. Open is Fife. Indiana still scoreless. Well, I'm a little surprised Indiana taking such quick shots. Boozer open inside and Duke leads four to nothing. 
with three minutes, 15 seconds gone. For those of you expecting to see Arizona, Oklahoma, and we'll get you out to the West Region in San Jose shortly, tip off is scheduled for 7.55. As Coverdale on the drive and a whistle against Duke. The foul, Duhan, his first. The Hoosiers of uh, Mike Davis defeating Utah. Majerus is a uh, fine Utah club convincingly, and then UNC Wilmington sent them home uh, after their brilliant first round win, 76 67. In the corner, Hornsby can't hit. Oh, my. Tough start for Indiana. Uh, you know, very important for the Hoosiers to come out and be aggressive, show no fear to the number one team in the country, but taking quick shots is just not smart basketball. Dunleavy, the runner that rims out, and Odell collects it for Indiana. Redheaded Coverdale with a long pass to Fife, who fires from three. There is the first score for the Hoosiers. And Dick, it looks like Indiana saying the heck was slowing things down. Uh, the heck was controlling tempo we're going to push it up look for the first opportunity we can get but really that is Duke's game because they can explode on you in an up and down game what a move by Williams to set up Dante Jones it's 6-3 Duke as Jones has his first score and also Indiana on these slow trips up the floor not taking advantage of the opportunity to go inside to Jared Jeffries who can score in there can draw fouls Jeffries gets away from Dunleavy's double team. Oh, no foul. A block was by Chris Sanders just into the game. And Jeffries can also do that. Find the open man on the baseline, draw double teams, and kick out for open shots. Hornsby called for the foul, and that does not please Mike Davis a bit. Casey Sanders just into the game with a block at the other end, and Duke has an early 6-3 lead. Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Coming up, Arizona, Oklahoma will be switching out to that West region in San Jose for many of you at 7.55 Eastern for the tip. As Tom Coverdale, two early fouls with four and a half minutes gone, Coverdale has to take a seat. And immediately, Jason Williams drills a three. That is his 104th career three-point field goal attempt, the most in tournament history. 9-3 lead for number one Duke. And uh, Mike Davis has to go to his freshman point guard, Donald Perry. Another Hoosier hits the floor. <laughs> Lots of contact. Inside to Newton, he traveled. As Carlos Boozer had him covered. The Duke Blue Devils, defending champions, number one in the nation, number one seed, with the monstrous win over 16th seed Winthrop and had a scare. Notre Dame led by seven with six and a half to go and the game was even with just barely over a minute left. Boozer dribbles off his toe out of bounds. Oh no they're saying out of bounds to do. Jeffrey Newton on the defense there actually it looked with like he was hooked as well as Boozer is getting excellent position inside and yeah the hook there and it dribbled off his own foot could have very easily been the second personal foul on Carlos Boozer. And I think Jeffrey Newton for Indiana is going to be the wild card in this game. He has really picked up his play. It gives Indiana some size in there some shot blocking and a guy that can score inside. You saw Daniel Ewing the freshman the only freshman on this Duke squad come in. He was a key factor in the victory over Notre Dame. Duhan scores again and Duke out to an early eight point lead. Tough duty now for Donald Perry the freshman from Tallulah Louisiana going against one of the best defenders in Chris Duhan. No problem there. Able to turn the corner on the entire Duke defense and that's what you got to do when you're pressured. Attack and get as far as you can in that case attack the basket. Duhan can't hit at the other end and here comes Perry averaging just 2.2 points again. Good feed inside to Newton and another easy two. So Perry seems to ignite this Indiana attack. Showing no jitters whatsoever. Donald Perry doing what Mike Davis wants. Force to tempo. Push it up the floor. He must have seen some kind of flaw in Duke's transition defense because they're attacking it. No one covering Boozer for the putback rebound. He has four points, and it's a 13-7 Duke lead. 13 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this opening half. And a steal by Dunleavy. And it's taken back by Fife. Indiana with the numbers, and Dunleavy has another steal on the one sequence. Two steals for Dunleavy. And Ewing fires for three. Oh, this kid 
from Texas, Missouri City, Texas, where he was a teammate of T.J. Ford, who has gone to Texas to be the top assist man in the conference, comes in and hits a three again. Keep an eye on Mike Dunleavy. He has been a whirlwind at the defensive end. He's at radar on the basketball, stealing it all over the floor. And Duke loves this. They love to go up and down, very comfortable. They'd rather do this than play half-court basketball, for sure. Well, Dunleavy, amongst his many qualities, people overlook his defense. He led Duke with 77 steals. Trouble hanging on to the ball, Indiana, and another steal for Dunleavy. 80 for the season. And three here in the first half. Seven minutes gone. Duke building its lead. Boozer battling inside against Jeffries. And that's his shot. And suddenly it's an 11-point lead. Lexington, Kentucky, Rupp Arena. 22,000. It's been the Duke fans who've had the chance to cheer. They've opened up an 18-7 lead against Indiana's Hoosiers. That's Perry, the freshman, inside to Newton. Another turnover. And here comes Jason Williams. Oh, that's too easy. But this pace is just it's suicide for Indiana. They're not comfortable in it. Of the 16 teams left in this tournament, they are the lowest scoring team at 70 points a game and second best in giving up points at just 62. They're much better in a slower tempo game. I can't understand why they're playing this pace. 11 to 0, the points off turnovers for Duke. Jeffries using the left hand and Newton there for the foul on the slam. First points for Jeff Newton, averaging eight a game, but he's been hot down the stretch for Indiana. Well, the whole key for the Hoosiers is going inside to Jared Jeffries. Ewing and Dunleavy has trouble, and there's the scramble for the ball, and uh, the held ball with the arrow pointing to Indiana. And with that timeout, 11.47 remaining in this opening half, we'll take a break. Jason Williams and Duke leading 20-9. Back at Rupp Arena with our game summary. No surprise there. 11 to 0. Points off turnovers for Duke. On the season, the Blue Devils averaged 25 points a game off turnovers. You've got to watch the ball. Well, yeah, Dick, <laughs> a lot of those turnovers are self imposed on the part of Indiana. Most of them are from that man, Mike Dunleavy. Some people have him for three steals, some people have him for five steals. He has gotten his hand on a lot of basketballs that he shouldn't have this early in the game. Duke outscoring Indiana the last two minutes, 15 seconds, 9 to 2. Inside to Newton. Perry doesn't shoot much from out there. Odell able to save it for Indiana, and then it's inside to A.J. Moy, who has just come into the game, a sophomore from Atlanta. Well, A.J. is a scrapper. Pesky, feisty. He's going to find the loose balls. He'll get in there amongst the tall trees for offensive rebounds. Sanders is fouled. Casey Sanders, the junior from Tampa, seeing some early duty for Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Little A.J. Moy at six foot three, a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, loves to go in there and battle with the big guys. He'll grab arms, wrist, hands, whatever, and generally he comes up with the loose ball. Jeff Newton with his first foul for Indiana. Sanders hits the free throw. Foul situation, 14 fouls in Indiana, only two called against Duke. That's the first point for Sanders, uh, averaging less than two a game. Former Florida Mr. Basketball is Jared Jeffries, the Indiana star, returns. And Odell is out. Twenty-one eleven as Sanders hits one out of two. Perry Jeffries, five, Newton, and Moye on the floor and another turnover for Indiana. Check out the fastest tournament scoreboards on the internet. Get play by play of each game only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. I'm talking with a lot of the Duke people yesterday. Yes, they were concerned about Jared Jeffries and what he could do inside, possibly getting the big, big, big people like Boozer in foul trouble, but actually more concerned with Tom Gut Coverdale running the show and shooting threes along with Fife and Hornsby. Dunleavy again. He's all around the ball on the defensive side. Williams, great pass. Entry to Boozer gives him that shot, and that's tough to stop. Newton can't, and it's 23 11. Duke. By a dozen as we approach the midpoint of this second or this first 10 20 minute period. 
Indiana's got a punch inside to Jeffries, and he's got to take it with force just like that to try to at least draw some fouls inside. Every time I see him handling the basketball in the perimeter, not that he can't handle it out there, and not that he can't play plays or make shots, but so much more effective. This is actually pretty decent defense by Jeff Newton there, although backing up a little bit too much, going straight up in the air. Got to do a little better job of forcing Boozer a step or two outside the edge of that lane to make Boozer start out further where he's not as effective. Jeffries averaging 17 a game despite a injury plague season. Midseason badly injured his ankle, fought through it, played, but was not as effective. And that foul was on Dunleavy, his first. Jeffries, one out of two. Down goes uh, Dunleavy with Moye in the lane, and Jason Williams says, uh, hang on there, partner. I'll slow it down. Do you get into the offense? Right, everybody coming into a Duke game wants to be as physical as possible with Mike Dunleavy. At this point now, he's so used to it, I think he's thriving on it. Jason Williams trying to rebound his missed shot, picks up the foul, his first. Coach Mike Krzyzewski, a Hall of Famer. See him last night on uh, 60 Minutes, Charlie Rose. And the great comment that says, why are you so tough on yourself, coach? He said, because I don't have a coach. I, I have to coach myself, and I get mad at myself. <laughs> you can identify with that. But he has a wife, Mickey. <laughs> Perry with a layup and couldn't hit it, and then Moye trying to scrape in the rebound. Travels is the call. Five field goals, ten turnovers for Indiana. You don't uh, beat Duke. You don't beat a lot of teams uh, with that number. No. And Tom Coverdale continues to stay on the bench. Now keep in mind Coverdale, who's had a bad ankle for the last uh, week or two, getting treatment all the time on that. So, you know, Mike Davis would, would not be playing in that many minutes anyway. But he's so important to this team as far as running the show. Getting the ball to the right people and being a scoring and three point threat. With Coverdale on the bench, Indiana, this uh, lineup, a lot of reserves while Duke has all five starters on the court. Those are working now. And number five, that's George Leach. And Dunleavy showing his great versatility. Goes outside and hits the three. He has five. Well, now that Boozer has got off scoring four for four from the field, now the defense has to collapse and get on him. That'll open up the outside shooting. Another turnover as Duhan with the steal, the 11th turnover for the Hoosiers. And that leaves Dante Jones, and he is challenged by Leach as Leach picks up the foul. It'll be number five on Indiana. Mike Dunleavy is hanging out on the weak side, perfect for that skip pass as Carlos Boozer feeling the defense coming down to him. At Dunleavy zeroed in all the way. Everybody thought Mike Dunleavy had a subpar game against Notre Dame the other night. He actually finished with the 12 points on only eight shots taken. He did have nine rebounds. Mike Krzyzewski telling us yesterday he was very happy with the game that Dunleavy had. He had to play a very physical game. It, it took a lot out of him, but he was pleased with all the other little things that Dunleavy did to help uh, Duke uh, come through, and that's weaker. Yeah, he said that Boozer didn't have a good game. He was the one who had the bad game. Yeah, and actually, his number is pretty good, too. 13 points, eight rebounds, but foul problems, and when Carlos Boozer gets in foul trouble, that hurts the whole Duke cause. Dante Jones from Trenton, New Jersey, a schoolboy friend, and there it is, an extra chance. Indiana not boxing out, didn't get it. And the fire by Duhon from deep in three-point range. And Duke showing the crowd here at Rupp Arena White. They are indeed the number one team in the nation. It's 29 to 12. And again, a steal by Duke. What they're doing, Dick, is they're forcing Indiana so with so much pressure out on the perimeter. They can't get in good position. Even to make a simple A to B pass to get the offense going, they're take, making those passes and the pressure. What they got to do is crisply move the ball. Tom Coverdale, uh, he too, uh, favoring a bad ankle, comes in. Fife picked up the foul. Jared Odell is also going to report in for the Hoosiers. He'll play uh, the starter as Leach returns to the bench. Man to man defense against his underneath out of bounds play. Jones loses it, a rare steal by Indiana. Coverdale, Hornsby fakes Dunleavy and uses the glass. 
Well, least, first points for him. At least that time, Indiana got the ball below the free throw line extended. extended, and now you can at least be in attack mode, but they are pretty much back on their heels out on the perimeter, and you see the outstanding shooting from Duke. Seven more shot attempts, and Dunleavy unable to hit the jumper, and Jared Jeffries, oh, reaching in, and Dante Jones almost with another steal. Hornsby to Odell, back out to Hornsby. Jeffries comes outside against Jones. Got about six inches on the defender. But Dante Jones and Chris Duhon, you pointed it out, on the perimeter, they just make it miserable for the man with the ball. And then a whistle away from the ball, and Jones with a hold underneath. That'll be Duke's 15 foul, Indiana with six. We have a break at 7.46 left in the opening half. And today, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, Indiana did not start this game in any way, shape, or form that they had to. And when you're playing against a team like Duke, you can't give them any kind of edge. Now, Jared Jeffries, he can go outside and do that, but I don't think Duke will care. They know the only place he can really hurt them is if he goes inside, scores, and gets people in foul trouble. Jeffries had been 0 for 9 in the last seven games, so that's a welcome three from Mike Davis and Indiana. It's 12 point lead. Dunleavy fires from 15, well short. Jeffries. And when he came to Indiana, they were talking about him being a Magic Johnson. You can see why. He can handle the ball. And trying to bat the ball over the shoulder of the Duke player, the foul goes against Indiana. Jared Odell, his first. Uh, Jared Jeffries actually coming into this game on the season shooting better than 37 percent from beyond the arc which he's good but you don't want him taking a lot of shots outside he is so effective uh, around the basket and he's the one guy that can free up the three point shooters for Indiana something they do extremely well Duke Beach in a lot of ways uh, and one of them is they get more free throws the last few years they've made more free throws than opponents try. And that's just testimony to their total talent at both ends. And so it is again tonight already in the bonus. And it's that area of the game that bailed them out in round number two against Notre Dame as they hit 11 out of their last 12 from the line and four out of four for Jason Williams who's kind of got that uh, sign on his back that he is not a good free throw shooter up at around 68 percent. And three to Jared Jeffries. Mike Davis wanted more of this as Odell gets the easy two. He was hoping that Indiana could attack, attack inside to Jeffries, and that sets up the outside shooters and plays like that. But that's a rare uh, time where they've executed that strategy. And another foul against Indiana for a hold. This time, Odell his second. And the reason Jeffries to Odell is so wide open, like Dunleavy, in position to try to help out on Carlos Boozer doesn't want him to get his second personal foul and Mike did the no-no there turned his head defensively and lost sight of his man. Mike Davis in his second year the 41 year old mentor of the Hoosiers taking over for Bobby Knight nowhere easy pass Carlos Boozer Duke's best free throw shooter misses the front end of one and one. Horns the Hawk by freshman Ewing Jeffries again has to come out on top against Dante Jones. Now he takes him and the foul's going to be on Jones for the block a tough call but Jones now with two. Boy they just put jersey to jersey. Duke's well, defense. Jared Jeffries again he's got to be very careful as a big man trying to go against a very tough defensive player in Dante Jones. Clearly the advantages to Jones and even though he gets the foul call of him, Jeffrey's got to give the ball up and find position inside. Bad, bad pass by the freshman Perry at the point. So Indiana has Williams from three, and uh, Odell has it taken away by Bozer. More turnovers by Indiana in this first half than they commit in a game. Williams, oh, did he fly by Perry? And the and a charge on Williams. Oh, that was not uh, the call the Duke fans were looking for in that situation. And it's two on the All American Jason Williams. Uh, Kyle Hornsby does a good job of stopping, not clearing out the lane, and getting over, sensing what Jason Williams and where he was going. Got there in plenty of time, even though Jared Jeffries had Jason Williams all locked up with the top block. 
So young Daniel Ewing replaces Jason uh, Jason Williams. And uh, Duke with that luxury of a 12 point lead with other six minutes to go in the half and Jared Jeffries now that's the kind of inside game he has. Well, he's so smooth in and around the basket he has a good footwork terrific touch and now the crowd here in Kentucky senses that Duke has cooled off and Indiana has maybe finally settled down. Carlos Boozer though he hits that 10 foot jump hook he has 10 to lead all scores. And that'll quiet all of the crowd except the Duke fans. Coverdale inside to Jeffries. This is the game plan. Jeffries, two for two in there. Making it look easy right now. And Dick, you gotta wonder why Indiana did not come out at the beginning of the game with that mindset. Sure, run when the opportunity presents itself. After steals, after blocks, after long rebounds, but in half court, slow times down the floor, punch it into Jeffries. Ewing. Oh my two three-point attempts. Two converts. He has six. Duke might not be here tonight had it not been for Daniel Ewing coming off the bench having a brilliant game against Notre Dame with 18 points. This time they collapse and the scramble and Dunleavy and oh, it's like a football scramble for a fumble and it did appear that Indiana just flew in there with a foul but no whistle and then the foul is called on Duhon of Duke his second and suddenly two fouls each. On three of the Duke starters here in the opening half. Jason Williams, Duhan, and Jones. Well, you expect team, both of these teams to be extremely aggressive. Everything loose on the floor. They're going to be bodies flying. Here at Lexington's uh, Rupp Arena, it's 36 23, number one in the nation. Duke Blue Devils in command as you. Look at the game summary each team over 50 percent but Duke getting so many more opportunities off turnovers 13 to 7 and then this is the front end of the one and one Jared Odell of Indiana. Here come the Devils leading by 13 with four and a half to go. A lot of the Duke half court offense generally winds up in ball screens a lot of pick and roll offense which is very difficult for college players to defend. Dante Jones with a big move. Odell rebounds for Indiana. Perry, the freshman, playing at the point. Coverdale inside to Odell. Perry. Good pass to Newton. Newton throws it away. Coverdale, can he save it? No. Ewing the other way. Misses the layup. Did Fife, uh, did he throw it off a leg of a Duke player? Fife thought so. So did Mike Davis, the Indiana coach. The first call was out of bounds to Duke. And that's time at take a break at the 349 mark. Well, take a look at a number of factors here. As uh, watch the hand up, up here by Dane Fife, the hip there, and there was action down on the baseline there. Actually, this should be Indiana's ball. And it goes to Duke. Ewing, Dunleavy, inside. Boozer. Dante Jones and Jason Williams is back in playing with two fouls. Three and a half to go. First half, 13 point lead. Duke makes that oh, almost 16 as Dunleavy has a rattle out. Coverdale brings it down for the Hoosiers. Spins around Ewing, hands it off to Odell. Good play by Coverdale to set it up. One of the rare times any Indiana backcourt man has been able to penetrate the perimeter defense at Duke has been so stodgy, not letting anybody, anybody get by them. Tough break for Indiana as that pass shot by Williams so short it uh, handcuffed Odell. Coverdale able to get by the freshman Daniel Ewing as he bit on a little bit of a ball show, not necessarily a fake. And that's the last thing Duke wants to have their defense penetrated. And that's when big guys like Boozer Dunleavy can get in foul trouble. Odell out, Jeff Newton in for Indiana. Duke just under 50%, Indiana just over 50% shooting. But uh, Mike Davis's team, because of their failure to protect the ball, have given Duke way too many points off turnovers. And they actually have to be very happy to be only down 11 at this juncture, a little more than three minutes to go in the first half with all the faulty ball handling that they've had. 
Blues are working on Jeffries. Boy, he uses his body well, doesn't he? Again, he's just so much stronger than any of the front court players for Indiana. The Indiana guys are long and tall, but not very bulky inside. Blues are a perfect first half. Six for six leads all scores with a dozen. Coverdale to Newton. So two nice assists from Tom Coverdale. He set up easy baskets. It's an 11 point lead for Duke. And Daniel Ewing, the freshman, getting the evil eye from Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke coaching staff. Twice he's gotten beat on penetration. Perry with a steal, and then he overpasses, and Coverdale able to save for Indiana. Jeffries fires from three. Jones the rebound. That would have been big for the Hoosiers to get him back into a single digit deficit. Dick, it would, but unnecessary. There's just too much to be had if they take their time, use some clock. There's plenty of time to punch it inside. Now they're able to penetrate into the defense as well. No need to launch wild threes. Ewing, nice move, can't score. Foul on Duke. Is it Jones or Ewing that reached in? Ewing is first. Uh, Carlos Boozer having his way ever since the beginning of the game. Actually, he's forced to catch a little bit further out this time. Jeffrey's trying to use his body, but not nearly strong enough to nudge Boozer out. He's just in a very comfortable area now, making all six of his shots basically in the same spot on the floor. You see 12 points. One more for Boozer it would give him 1,500 in his collegiate career. He'd be the 23rd in Duke history to hit that mark. And another missed free throw. Newton. Jeffrey's trying to save. Out of bounds off Indiana. And this time again a scramble. And uh, they rule off the leg of the Hoosiers. And everybody going for the loose ball here. And Good we can call. see the kick by Jared Jeffries. Duhan with the drive and then to Boozer. Oh, what a pass done, Levy. No basket, but he was hammered from behind. Here to be Perry that got him. It was his first. Coming up singular at the half, Greg and Clark in New York will get you updated on all the tournament news. They'll switch out live to take a look at that Arizona-Oklahoma game. All coming up on singular at the half. A couple of growth spurts for Mike Dunleavy ever since he went down to Durham and put on a, a good amount of muscle and some poundage coming into this season. And it has helped them. Unfortunately for Mike, he has become a big forward. I don't know if he necessarily wants to do that. There's Dad Mike. He was a tenacious defender himself in his collegiate days at South Carolina. A lot of years for Mike Dunleavy as a coach. I wonder which is more nerve-wracking for him. Well, Coaching your team and not sleeping or watching your son or daughter play some kind of an athletic event. No, I think it's tougher to be a parent. I agree. <laughs> I don't think there's any question. Uh, 40 to 27 as we approach the one minute mark first half. Jeffries inside on Boozer. The jump hook. Not there. Dunleavy is. Loose ball picked up by Duhon. And Duke, Mike Krzyzewski calls a timeout. 1.15 left in the first half. It's been all Blue Devils. 75 seconds left in this first half. Mike Dunleavy, Carlos Boozer inside have uh, led this Duke team to an impressive 13-point lead as we approach halftime. And there's Boozer missing his first shot, one of his easiest. Jeffries goes down, no whistle. Duke gets the ball. And an easy two from Duhon. Well, that's a tough break for Indiana. They gave him another two. Well, hard to figure out what Jared Jeffries was thinking there or doing on the play. It appeared that he had the rebound. Yes, he was on the floor, but just cover up. He can take the 30-second timeout to save the possession. You know, Indiana can just not afford all of these errors, mental and physical. Hornsby inside the Newton. And that's going to be a foul on whom? Loser. Ooh. Newton took it in strong against Boozer, and for Carlos Boozer, it's his second foul. And Jared Jeffries did get bumped from behind, and I, I see there, I thought he had possession of the ball. He actually, on that bump, lost it, and it looked like he was trying to shovel it, hopefully to a teammate, but shoveled it right to a Duke player. And then Jeffrey Newton, in a minor collision there with Carlos Boozer, appeared to get the wind knocked out of him. A tougher call for the officials when it's a body foul 
uh, than when you're reaching in and some of these bumps and uh, collisions uh, involving that. Well, this let's one. see. Yeah, Boozer, yeah, he, he stepped up and in and actually even turned the right hip right into the midsection of Jeffrey Newton to give you an understanding of why he got the wind knocked out of him. Well, Indiana, Matt, is experience, uh, experiencing what so many ACC teams and opponents of Duke have felt throughout the last few years with Coach K at the helm. It's tough to stop their attack. 42 points is the most given up by an Indiana team uh, this year in the first half. Yeah, they normally play it much closer to the best. Their final scores are somewhere where they're scoring 70 to 75 and they generally hold their opponents in the into the 60s. That's why I was so surprised at the way they came out and played. So Newton had to go to the bench and, and that gives a Mike Davis the right to uh, have A.J. Moye step to the free throw line. He's an 80 percent free throw shooter. 42 29 Moye with four points and Duke can go for the final shot. They're almost identical uh, just a half a second difference in game and shot clock. And normally you could expect Jason Williams to eventually get his hands on the ball in this situation top of the key or on the wing and let him create or maybe just a high pick and roll with Dunleavy and Duhon uh, pick and fade down to six. Ewing with five, Coverdale on him with three inside to Dunleavy. Back outside, just beats the buzzer, Duhan. And that is the end of the first half. I mean, and what has to concern Indiana is the fact that they really shut down the two top scorers for Duke and yet uh, trail by 13. And it's turnover 16 to 8 key, and the points off those turnovers 23 to 6. Williams and Dunleavy, two for eight each. That's four for. 16 25 percent but the rest of the team shot 67 percent 12 of 18. I don't know if I buy Mike Davis explanation or not I don't think I really do because he's got veterans out on the perimeter Tom Coverdale a junior but a good floor leader Dane Fife and Kyle Hornsby are seniors they've been around they know they know what it is you know they know who they're playing that doesn't mean get back on your heels and be afraid of Duke but you've got to be judicious with your possessions. Coverdale, who sat out early with two fouls, that may have had something to do with it. Odell is set up by Fife, an easy two to start the Indiana half, and they cut into the lead. It's now 11. Oh, one of the real interesting matchups to start this game, we really didn't talk about in the first half, was Dane Fife at about six foot five guarding Mike Dunleavy. Now he is the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, co-defensive player of the year, but he's giving away five inches to Dunleavy. Jason Williams from three point range has eight now. And whenever teams throughout the season, the last three years, have seen to draw, get a little momentum, that's when Williams seems to be tough at shooting the ball. A lot of people think he takes too many three point shots. He makes a decent percentage, but Mike Krzyzewski, he'll accept those shots. He wants his guy to be fearless and confident and take shots that they think they can make. The only shot Krzyzewski doesn't like is an unexpected one. That's when you don't have good offensive rebounding and you don't have good floor balance. Odell now with eight points, a nice assist from Tom Coverdale, and Coach K wants time. Now this is the meat and potatoes of Duke's half-court offense. Draw and kick. Dante Jones going to penetrate in the lane. Just draw the defenders enough, and Jason Williams does not lead a time to flick off those three. Two out of four for downtown for Jason Williams. But how about Coach K taking a timeout with a minute and a half in? He didn't like the way Odell got those two easy baskets, and he made the correction on the sidelines. Jones Dunleavy, now Duhon on this side. Boozer working underneath. And here's Jason Williams, the All-America, number one player, Naismith Player of the Year, and Jones off the glass. He now has four. But quick ball reversals by Duke. So hard. And Indiana is a good half-court defensive team. They contain, contain the dribbler very well. But that kind of ball movement on the reversal and the, the quickness of a Dante Jones to get up in the air with that soft touch. Coverdale penetrates again, and Odell scores another easy two. He has 10 to lead the Hoosiers. It's pretty much Indiana's game as well. A little draw, kick, get into the lane, drop down to the big people. Boozer fouled as he goes up. And Carlos Boozer to the line. Fouls on Hornsby, the team's first, and the team's first of the 
Dick Enberg uh, met and Armin here at Lexington, Kentucky, where the South Regional 47 35. Duke leading Indiana. They have a 13 point advantage at the half. And Odell with a couple quick baskets here in the second half now leads Indiana with 10. And Boozer playing nearly a perfect game, six for seven from the floor at the line, looking for his 14th point. The shooting statistics Indiana misleading 57 percent trailing by 13 points 14 points in the game because of their failure to protect the basketball the turnover is clearly the story of the first half the only thing Duke not doing well in this game and even though Boozer just made those two free throws is overall team free throw shooting it's it's been a thorn in their sides throughout the season when they have struggled Jared Jeffries forced outside Boozer right on him. So he'll fire from long range. And slipping underneath Bain Fife to get the offensive rebound. And Hornsby partially blocked by Boozer. Jeffries, though, underneath the bat at home. Jared Jeffries, the Indiana All America, with 10 points. Well, it's not often you see a big guy like Carlos Boozer challenging a three point shot on the perimeter. And not only did he challenge, he got a piece of it. But his teammates couldn't pick off the loose ball. There's Jeffries. Jared Jeffries basically all alone inside among small people with the exception of Mike Dunleavy at six foot nine because Boozer was out on the perimeter tipping that shot. Duhan back to Jones and Jones off the glass. Dante Jones who transferred from Rutgers and influenced by Jason Williams. They were buddies New Jersey high school system. Jeffries around Boozer all alone for that jumper. Well short, but there's Odell to clean it up. Jared Odell with a dozen. And Carlos Boozer's going to have to be a little bit more careful. He was getting caught way out on the perimeter. Challenging shots, going for steals, and that's leaving his teammates naked inside. Jason Williams off the mark, and Fife feeds ahead to Coverdale. He's got Jeffries with him, but hustling from behind. Duhon bats it out of bounds. Now this south bracket. Duke and Indiana in this opening game will meet the winner of Pittsburgh, the number three seed, and the Cinderella team here in the South, Kent State's Golden Flashes. That game to follow approximately 9.55 Eastern Time. Boozer get given a rest, and uh, Casey Sanders in for Duke. Fight. Barely beat the three-second count. Odell over Dunleavy. He's feeling it. Jared Odell. And suddenly Indiana with 10, and that has this crowd excited. Well, Jared Odell just being active in and around the basket, hanging on the baseline, covering up his man in the lane. Ewing with the ball, so Ewing and Sanders, two substitutions made by Coach Krzyzewski here early in the second half. Dunleavy working inside, and... Bat at home by Sanders. He has three points off the bench. Low point lead. Jeffries muscling inside and a foul. No basket. The foul committed before the shot by Jeffries. And with that, a timeout with 440 gone in this second half. Duke by 12. 15 minutes and 20 seconds left in the second half. Duke by 12. Indiana's ball. Jared Odell 5 for 5 in the second half. Now with 14 to match Carlos Boozer's 14 that leads Duke. Whistle away from the ball. Uh, Jared Odell with a quiet four points in the first half. All of a sudden, he's been the man wide open. And most of the time, it's been Mike Dunleavy losing Jared Odell. And all he's doing is finding the little cracks, the little seams and getting on the offensive board. Sanders with that last foul. He now has two, giving Boozer a break. Coverdale hawked by Duhan in a crowd. Fights for it. And a whistle. <laughs> and better late than never. Uh-oh. He comes down holding his left ankle that's heavily bandaged. He's been playing with that painful injury most of the year. Dante Jones, the foul, his third. And here comes Boozer and Jason Williams back in the game for Duke. Well, Tom Coverdale was in. You see the grab there by Dante Jones, not called, and then 
trying an acrobatic move in the air. He's not high in the air to begin with, trying to find that open man underneath. And Coverdale remains scoreless in the game, and that's uh, critical to Indiana trailing Duke as Jeff Newton returns for the Hoosiers. And Hornsby goes up. And Dick, oddly enough, Tom Coverdale was the focus of Duke's defense coming in. First of all, he's the lead guard, so they wanted Duon to put a lot of pressure on him, which probably nobody in college basketball does it better than Chris Duon. And then Tom Coverdale helped out Duke by picking up two quick personal fouls and had to go to the bench. Now, testimony to the attack defensively of Duke. They pick out their man and shut him out. No travel, although they. Boozer fans trying to help the officials. Boozer inside. Dante Jones blocked by Newton, gets it back. And Odell with a rebound, and along with Jones, battle for it, and dual possession. Arrow points to Indiana. Boozer fans. Oh, foul's been called. Oh, my. Uh, Jared Oval all over the place inside in good position there. And then a tie up, and uh, no doubt, look like the official, he does. He's got the. Uh, Bruce Benedict has his fist in the air as if to call a foul. And Boozer gets ticketed, and he was away from that scramble. It's the third on Boozer. Trailing by 11, Duke is led by as much as 17. Indiana never in front. Closest they've been was. 4-3 early and now a foul away from the ball at the other end. And Dane Fife of the Hoosiers shaking his head. His second. Illegal pick set by Dane Fife. Trying to step here on the weak side and just re-putting up his chest. But you got to keep your arms and elbows inside the width of your body. And it looked like Dane Fife has got a little bit of a, a football background. Reaching out just a tad. Dunleavy out of bounds to Duke. He was an outstanding high school player. He was five back in Clarkston, Michigan. As a quarterback, I don't think he was doing a lot of blocking. Oh, they're tough though in Clarkston. You got to <laughs> throw the blocks in those sweeps. Yeah, you flip it one side and then go block the other as they reverse. Oh, you bet. That's near Ann Arbor, you know, the home of the Buck Lateral series. You never know. Outside is Dunleavy, banks it off the window. Mike Dunleavy has to lead the nation in points scored on underneath out of bounds legitimately and then on the little trick plays where he just deadheads his opponent and gets sneaky little layups but uses the screens beautifully and terrific execution by Duke. Indiana going big now. Three men at 6-9 or better. Ooh, Odell fooled by the pass from Fife inside but draws the foul. Take a look at the underneath out of bounds. It's just a simple little screen to screener. Man's going to come off, and then Dunleavy is going to get another screen here. Just ideal execution. Just about every play in America runs some form of this, and all it's a matter. And everybody knows it's coming, but when you execute well, very difficult to stop it. Jared Odell fouled by Dunleavy. Dunleavy second. Odell a nine-point average on the season has come up big for the Hoosiers tonight. He's looking for his 16th point. And a second chance as Jeffries with the offensive rebound. Jared Jeffries spin move. Not there. Newton gets it back to Jeffries. Misses again. Jeffries missing too close in. And Newton another chance. Coverdale. Oh, that's going to be on Coverdale. He charges his way up the lane. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but Coverdale out of control as Mike Dunleavy stepping up to take the charge. Mike Davis wants a timeout. But it's not acknowledged at this point as Duke has the ball. And the reason that Indiana able to volleyball up there is they've got the very tall front line on the court right now with Oval, Newton, and Jeffries. Dunleavy can't hit the three pointer. Jeffries clears. Coverdale. And five for three. Another offensive rebound. Jeffries. And this one trickles home. And it's 55. 45. Indiana's been able to get within 10 on a couple of occasions in the second half and not able to dent into a single digit deficit. No foul there as Indiana wanted. And Dunleavy makes some pay with a three. He has 14. Timeout, Indiana. And look at Mike Davis storming at the officials.
Well, Mike Dunleavy has been doing most of his damage at the defensive end, coming up with steals, taking charges, but also chipping in now with 14 points. He's just four out of 12 from the field. That's his second three-pointer. As both coaches absolutely livid with the officials and getting in their ear now, seemingly on every play. Well, Davis mad about the calls, and then Coach K in the timeout was just as furious because he felt Davis should have been given a technical for coming out of the coaching box. Inside the Jeffries. Boozer all over him. Finger roll not there. He traveled. And Davis is up again. He can't believe the call, but it appeared to be a good one from here. Now Mike Davis, the Indiana coach, looking for something to grab on the press table over there. Good thing nothing was loose. He's about to toss something right now. But no, they, no chairs here they, they, allowed they, they, at Rupp Arena. <laughs> Any loose object. That, the size, though, of Indiana is hurt or should be hurting Duke at one end, and it is if they don't turn the ball over. But now Duke should be able to spread the floor at their end and hurt the bigger people of Indiana. Kicked out of bounds by Fife, a new 35 seconds. And where Duke has an advantage right now is Dante Jones being guarded by Jared Jeffries. I think he's got the lateral movement to stay with a guy like Jones. Dante Jones comes out. And now it'll be Daniel Ewing as Duke gets even smaller. And Dunleavy misses the three, but Boozer up there to get the rebound. Batted away from by Coverdale and a foul. Tom um, Coverdale, and that'll be his fourth, the first player in the game with four personal fouls. As we look at our tournament summary, one and two seeds are 14 and two. Only uh, Cincinnati, number one in Alabama, number two defeated Alabama by Kent State. We'll see the flashes later. Four teams in the Sweet 16 from the Big 12. The Pack 10 has three. And how about Lute Olson and the Arizona Wildcats? Rebuilding a team, he loses four great players, some of those that he thought would be staying for their junior or senior year, and builds them right back to a top club. And how about the season Luke Walton has had? I don't think anybody expect Luke Walton to be the kind of player he was, but of course, all the, the players leaving the Arizona program at the end of last season, he certainly got the opportunity to do it, and once he got that, he ran with it. And you can see Arizona battling Oklahoma out in the West and leading by three with three minutes gone in the second half. Boozer hits one out of two and has 15 points in the game. And uh, immediately he takes a seat, as does Coverdale, as Casey Sanders back in for Duke. And A.J. Moye now plays for Indiana. Back to a 14-point lead for the Duke Blue Devils. Perry now, he too returns, the freshman at the point. Jared Jeffries around Sanders, cut off by Dunleavy. That's where Jared Jeffries belong, in down on that low block, wild shot there, but he can create a lot of havoc inside, and here he draws the foul. On the elbow is the signal given as Jeffries went up with a shot. And the foul is on Casey Sanders, his third, but he has the five fouls to give, helping out Boozer. I, I guess it's a problem for Mike Davis, and he knows that Jeffries can play out on the perimeter, and it's not bad for him to go outside from time to time, given what the matchups are. But in this particular situation, with uh, Indiana needing points and needing three-point plays and wanting to get more fouls on Duke, he's got to get right back in and around the basket, as he did on that play. Mike Davis watching as... Jeffrey sights in. He has 13 points and 12 rebounds. The Big Ten Player of the Year, sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana, with the two free throws. A timeout. 11:34 remaining second half. The Devils by 12. As we look at our game summary, 15 is the number. Odell and Boozer at the bottom, both with 15 points. But the key: three-point shooting. 21 points off the threes for Duke, six for Indiana. That, too, is a 15-point difference. And, Dick, both of these teams thrive on the three-point shot throughout the season. Duke, on average, takes eight and out of 24, and Indiana is eight for 20. And a big factor has been Tom Coverdale getting those two early fouls, now sits on the bench with four fouls and only has one point in this game. He's a big part of their three-point attack. Talk about being shut out. Hasn't even been able to take a shot. Inside to Boozer, batted away by Newton, and off to Boozer last. So here comes Indiana trying to break that 10-point barrier. They could do it with a three. 
19 field goals for the Hoosiers in the game, 19 turnovers as well. Well, what Indiana has to do here, they got to come down, get the ball inside, preferably to Jared Jeffries. He's got Newton on the block now. Inside to Newton. Dunleavy picks him up. Newton, ball fake. And a turnover now as just, Dunleavy's defense. Yeah, again, a little bit of a flop there, but the Newton just not really comfortable, doesn't have the footwork to get the good shot. Travel. Yeah, that was too many on those who a little stutter step. Never put the ball on the floor. He knew it. Parents have moved from Juneau, Alaska, his home. 3,500 miles in the last year to live in Durham in order to see not only Boozer play basketball, but their daughter, who is a great singer, she's in college. Oh, Jason Williams after the steal. How many of those will he ever miss? Uncontested. Wow, what a break at this juncture, halfway through this second half for Indiana on the giveaway to Jason Williams. Jeffries inside, double team. Gets it up, and he misses an easy shot, but able to bat home his own rebound. Back to that 10-point deficit. No excuse not to go inside to Jared Jeffries. If he doesn't score himself, he's going to draw the defense in there, and somebody's going to get a good open look from the outside. Inside to Dunleavy, good position. Misses the hook, and comes up with it again. What quick hands for Dunleavy. Loose ball, and Indiana comes up with it. Moye, no numbers. The 10 minute mark here in the second 20 minute period. Moye, nope, it goes against Dunleavy on the block. His third. Uh, Jason Williams guessing right, popping into the passing lane, getting off of an easy one, and then you know, just a little bit of a flip, just too much spin coming out of his hands, kind of squeezed it out of there carelessly. Well, this crowd is a partisan Indiana crowd. Not only the Hoosier fans, but both Kent State and Pittsburgh fans cheering for the underdog. And now they're a little more excited because Duke's lead is now in single digits. Nine. Moye with five off the bench. As Jones back in, Ewing out for Duke. Fifty-nine, fifty-one at the 946 mark. And the big key here defensively for Indiana is to prevent penetration. Contain your man. Got to be a little bit ready to help on Jason Williams on his drive. Jason Williams. Inside the Boozer for an easy two. And a foul. Dan, Dane Fife with his third foul. Just way too easy here. They switched on the ball screen play, the pick and roll, and Dane Fife, who usually will battle anybody, any size or shape. He doesn't like the call. He felt it was just a little bit of a tap from behind. It was, but it was careless. And well short as Boozer, top free throw shooter, has been a little bold from the line for Duke, three for six in the game. Duke continues to leave the door open a crack for Indiana. Jeffries again outside drawing Boozer with him. So it's Dunleavy and Newton in the post. As Perry goes up with a tough little jumper. Newton has fouled as he goes up. It's either Boozer or Dunleavy. Neither good news for Duke. I think it's Dunleavy. And that would be his fourth. We'll see if Coach K goes to Sanders. And a discussion going on between Mike Krzyzewski and uh, Johnny Dawkins talking about the foul situation. Of course, it's all going to depend on, on Mike Dunleavy. Time and score. There's a plenty of time left now with 9.05 to go in this second half. And Dunleavy barking at the referee as he's going to head to the bench. And Mike Krzyzewski will be able to keep Dunleavy out as long as his team can maintain a 6, 8, 10 point lead. But anytime it gets under that, Mike Dunleavy will have to come back in. Newton, a good free throw shooter at 76%, misses them both. Sanders in at 6'11 gives Duke even more height and size. It's certainly not the great versatility of Dunleavy. Turnover, Moye picking up the loose pass. Perry. And 
and a foul on Sanders. He knew it. Stopped the easy basket. And Sanders now with four. Last week, Survivor was television's most watched show. Now it returns to its regular day and time. That'll be next Thursday night on CBS with an incredible challenge you have to see to believe. Catch an all new Survivor next Thursday, 8, 7 Central, here on CBS. Uh, Jeffrey Newton stepping to the line, a 76% free throw shooter on the season, 0 for 3 until he drains one there. I think it just seems like Duke keeps opening the door a little bit, and then Indiana keeps shooting themselves in the foot and just cannot crack that 10-point that barrier. Now down to 9, as you saw Ewing back in and Sanders out, so Duke very small now. Boozer returns. Or stays in actually. He's been in with three as Williams fires. That's usually where he comes up with a big one. And how about that rebound by Perry at only 6-2. And taken away. Another turnover and Duhan surveys the floor as he brings it into the offensive end. Another careless pass this time from the freshman Donald Perry. All the, the young players, old players, medium age players just make the simple play. Duhan way outside and way off the mark and Moye he sparks the Hoosiers every time he's come in they seem to improve. Well, he's got a nose for the ball he comes up with all the loose ones and of course you can never go wrong with a guy like that on the floor. Another careless pass by Perry and then it goes out of bounds to Indiana. Oh Perry got away with a foul as they battled for the air ball. 7.53 left. Indiana pulls within eight. Back in Kentucky with our CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Turnovers 22 Indiana. That ties their high for the year in points off turnovers. Duke taking full advantage of plus 16 points. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at our keyword CBS Sportsline. Coverdale with four fouls comes in for Indiana. Boy, passes up the three to take that leaner. Keeps it alive and Newton up with it. Fife looks for Jeffries inside. Loser playing off Jeffries. And what a play by Dante Jones. Moye spins and scores. And A.J. Moye pulls Indiana within six. And they're on their feet. A 10-2 run for the Hoosiers. Jason Williams. He trickles it home. Well, any kind of two-man action, ball screen, pick and roll. Jason Williams, a very tough customer there. Indiana is going to, the best thing they can do is trap him and make him give up the basketball. Jeffries again works inside against Boozer. He had to play a soft defense with a foul trouble Duke zone. 18 points for Jeffries to lead all scores. And now Indiana getting any kind of shot they want at point blank range. And if they do miss, they're really getting in there, knocking the ball loose, coming up at the second shot. And their points in the paint piling up, and a turnover is Boozer with a blind pass to Jason Williams. He couldn't handle. And suddenly Duke showing some vulnerability, and Coach K sees it too. He wants a timeout. Krzyzewski had plenty to say and that number he does not like Indiana outscoring Duke inside 20 to 8 here in the second half all the talk of the turnovers in the first half both teams with six each in the second back door and Moye scores and Indiana isn't within four I think Dick, this is what a lot of people including me expected from Indiana from the beginning of the game to come down and then methodically execute their half-court offense. They're doing it beautifully here in the second half. Boozer, Jeffries trying to hold his ground. Out to Jones, open. Rattles out. Battle and Ewing, the freshman inside to get the rebound and start the clock and give Duke another chance. 5.45 to go. Jason Williams can't score. Jones over the top, and the foul will be on whom? One point at an Indiana player, one point at a Duke player, but it appeared Jones over the top. It was, and Dante Jones has four.
a look at A.J. Moyer taking his man out here. The ball's going to come here to the high post of Jeffrey Newton, and they'll watch the beautiful execution on the backdoor play, taking advantage of the over-aggressiveness on the defensive Duke. Last five and a half minutes, man. IU outscoring Duke 14 to 2. Blue Devils don't go through drops like that very often. And now in foul trouble with both Dunleavy with four and Dante Jones with four. Two starters for Coach K. So the time and score have dictated now that Mike Dunleavy come back into the game. And Jones goes out. Jones rests with four. And Dunleavy in with four. Coverdale with four for Indiana. And uh, Sanders off the bench with four. And a rebound by Jeffries. Takes it up and scores. A three-point play. And Indiana is suddenly within one. And another arsenal, another weapon in the arsenal of Indiana is don't give up any layups or dunks. Make the Dukies earn it from the line. Boozer blocked by O.J. Moye and then a foul. No, they call it a jump ball. And the arrow points to Indiana, and they're going crazy at Rupp Arena. A.J. Moye stands maybe six foot three, but wow, right at the pinnacle, leading six foot eight, nine, Carlos Boozer, and said, uh-uh, get it out of here. Inside to Jeffries. That was for the lead, and Dunleavy rebounds, and he goes down holding his ankle. Holding that right ankle. As he turned it, it wasn't a violent move as he stepped on uh, another player's foot, which happens too often, and Father Mike looks on with concern. Dunleavy seems okay. Well, again, Jeffries, who gets great position, look down low on, in this area right down in here. And then Mike Dunleavy going to come down right, right there, the back of the heel in the turn. And you can see the instant pain and anguish on the face of Mike Dunleavy. But with the adrenaline flowing, Dunleavy stays. Less than five minutes to go. Indiana had the opportunity for its first lead. Ewing, a strong move, partially blocked by Jeffries. Boozer, he can't hit, but he's fouled. And then they have Ben Moye trying to stop him again. No, it was Jeff Newton with a foul, the 6'9 center with his second. And we'll send Carlos Boozer to the line. That's what I was talking about before. Don't give up any layups. Boozer is the best free throw shooter on the Duke team at 76%, but just three for six today. And makes that one for a two-point lead. You saw Coach K offering some suggestions to one of the men uh, in stripes. Boozer hits them both, and Duke back in front by three. Rupp Arena in a roar as Indiana has rallied from 17 points down to within one. Two Carlos Boozer free throws moments ago, giving Kentucky a three-point lead as Coverdale yet to score from the floor, but Newton with an offensive rebound. Here's the man that sparked the Hoosiers, Moye. He can't hit, and Jeffries... Oh, Jason Williams able to call time as he goes out of bounds. Calls the 30-minute second timeout with 4.25 left. And Duke protecting now a 65-62 lead. Indiana has never led. Terrific job by Jason Williams to save a possession here for Duke. They are precious at this juncture of the game getting the timeout. You know, Dick, we talked about Duke earlier giving up 19 offensive rebounds to Notre Dame last Saturday, and it's what's been killing him here in the second half. And hampered also by foul trouble with three starters playing with four fouls. Jason Williams can't hit the three, and Bozer a big offensive rebound. Dunleavy with four is in the game. And the foul is going to be on uh, Jared Jeffries for holding Boozer inside. It'll be his second. And a look at the foul trouble with 4.06 remaining. Coverdale with four. Duke fouls. Sanders, Jones, and Dunleavy with four. Boozer with three. Boozer at the line. Leading scorer for Duke with 19 in the game as Dunleavy sits down. Rattles.
goes out. Newton with a rebound. Take the one thing both teams have to remember here. Any long jump shot miss generally means long rebound, and you have to be quick in boxing your man out and then quick to that loose ball on the long one. Jeffrey's got Boozer in the air, takes it inside, and he's caught with a foul on the arm. Who got it? Daniel Ewing. Daniel Ewing who came in for Dunleavy and this young man, only 18, out of Missouri City, Texas, proving more and more valuable for Duke. Duke has had only of its 31 victories, all of them have been in double figures except three. Seton Hall, the season over Kentucky and Notre Dame. Well, they're fresh off the experience of having to come from behind against Notre Dame on Saturday. And of course, Duke being the number one team in the country, this is when they generally, 350 to go in, in the ballgame, they have another gear to go to defensively with their pressure to make it tough to handle. Jeffries one out of two with 20 points and 14 rebounds, the All-America for Indiana, but misses the second, and Duke comes down court with a two-point lead, 340 to go. Williams, and he gets it up and over. Jared Jeffries, a great drive by the All-America Jason Williams. I, think, I don't think Indiana can handle any kind of high screen or wing pick and roll play with Jason Williams involved. He's just too quick in turning the corner or splitting the defenders. Dunleavy at 6-9, denying Coverdale. Moye takes Jones, and that is going to be on Jones for the block. Dante Jones. He's out. That's his fifth foul. There's that high screen, and Jared Jeffries way too soft there, backing up, thinking that with his athleticism that he would be able to just block the shot. Actually, he's got to get over there and get his body between Jason Williams and the basket if he's going to do a good defensive job on the play. Jones leaves with six points. Dante Jones going to step in and he is sliding over there to his attempt to take the charge. Trailing by four, A.J. Moye with 11 points off the bench, plus some terrific rebounding, a block shot. And uh, he has been the spark, the star that's rallied this Indiana team in the second half. And where is Jared Odelby? He was the guy that got Indiana going in the second half, making his five of his uh, five for five in the beginning with the easy lay-ins. He's been on the bench forever. Moye and another missed free throw, but Jeffries a one-handed rebound then throws it away. Duhan with the interception. Hoosiers committing more turnovers than any game all season long. Dunleavy close to a travel. And maybe the mobility of Dunleavy lessened when he turned his ankle a few minutes ago. Let's see about his shot. A little long. Boozer gives Duke another chance, and Dunleavy fires and hits. Big, big shot by Mike Dunleavy, who has 17 points. Long misses mean long rebounds. I'll say it again. Foul on the hold by Duhan. Duhan's third. Boozer now with eight rebounds. It's a couple of times now he's been in the right position to get that long rebound and generally that's when the three point shooters will be open after an offensive rebound because all of the defense gets sucked in either looking for the rebound or watching the play. You can't watch. You got to make sure you can get back out quickly to three point shooters. It's been a nightmare tonight for Tom Coverdale the number two scorer for Indiana 12 plus points a game has not made a field goal and only one free throw. Indiana has missed 10 free throws in this game, and that critical. Timeout, 241 left. Mike Davis's Hoosiers trail by five. 22,000 at Rupp Arena treated to a dandy tonight. Time remaining, 241 with Duke up by five. But other than having the arrow, Duke with only one timeout left, and Indiana's in the double bonus, only seven Indiana fouls. So the Hoosiers with an advantage there as well if they can make their free throws. It's been a big offensive rebounding advantage, especially in this second half for Indiana. Overall, they've got 19 to Duke's 14, but on the last couple of possessions for Duke, it's been Carlos Boozer coming up with the big second shots. And right here, you got to think Duke is going to go to that high screen for Jason Williams. Indiana has shown no ability to keep him from getting to the basket. Easily get the ball inbounds. Modest press by Indiana. Fife. 
top defender for Indiana. He draws Williams inside and it throws it away. Jeffries with the interception. Trailing by five. Coverdale cut off by Duhan and then misses the short jumper. Passes under to Jeffries. He's fouled and he'll shoot one. Well, Duke has been kind of almost standing around in many cases looking to help out on penetrators. You see Boozer pulling back there. And when you're standing, watching, helping, and that's when you're vulnerable on the offensive boards. And Jeffries takes advantage of it there. Jason Williams was the Duke fouler. He has three. Jeffries leads all scorers, 24 points and 15 rebounds, showing you his All-America credentials. Two-point game, 2.08 left. Williams, three for 15, misses. Ball loose, Coverdale to fight. Duhan to beat. He'll pull it up. Coverdale. Cut off. And the foul is going to be called on Ewing of Duke, his third. And it's a rare game in which Indiana many more opportunities than Duke at the free throw line. As you see, Tom Coverdale stepped to the line. 27 attempts for the Hoosiers, only 18 for Duke. A chance to tie Coverdale. Indiana has never led, trailed by as much as 17. They've rallied in the second half. Coverdale could tie it with this free throw. Number one Duke, number one seed, cruising along most of the game, but the Hoosiers rallying here in the final 15 minutes. It's an even game with 1.45 to go. Pick and roll defense going to be critical for Indiana here. Boozer loses the ball, the last touch by Indiana. Both officials looking at one another, not really decisive with that call. Indiana players felt that Boozer just threw it out of bounds. Both teams, especially Indiana, rising to 49% field goal percentages and many more free throw opportunities. Dante Jones has already fouled out for Duke. Three players on the floor with four fouls. Boozer. And Fife able to bat it away from Jason Williams. And because of the Jones foul out, Mike Krzyzewski has almost been forced to go with Daniel Ewing, who was the hero for Duke in the Notre Dame victory, but he has made a number of freshman mistakes in this game. 15 on the shot clock on this possession. 133 left in the game. Ewing takes it inside and dumps it off to Williams. Jason Williams too long, but Boozer bats it out and another clock. Duke 35 seconds. Jason Williams to Ewing. Duhan throws it away. And Indiana for the first time with a chance for the lead. One eighteen to go. Duke, the number one team in the nation, 70. Indiana, the fifth seed here in the South, 70. Jared Jeffries has been almost unstoppable as far as getting a good shot inside. Coverdale inside. He gets the bounce. His first field goal of the game, giving Indiana the lead. And Dave Fife talking to his teammates. Let's switch everything out on the perimeter. Ewing can't hit the three. Rebound to Newton. 38 seconds to go. Coverdale of Indiana leading by two. Ewing hawking him. Timeout Indiana. And listen to this crowd at Rupp Arena. That's been a miserable offensive game for Tom Coverdale. Foul problems early. He's got four now. Almost forced to take this shot as he gets all of the rim and then some Coverdale averaging 12 points coming into this one has six in the game but does have seven assists and playing his normally good floor game. First lead of the game for Indiana three bounces off the iron and then home 32 seconds remaining. Jeffries inbounds the ball 24 seconds on the shot clock. There's uh, about a six seven second difference in shot and game clock. Duke's just going to play tough defense. Indiana would like to get a reasonably good shot here, but make sure they are back on defense so they don't give an easy run out. Ten seconds, and Moye held a 
by Ewing. Oh, no, they're going to call a time. Mike Davis had called a time from the bench with nine seconds on the shot clock, 15.3 seconds on the game clock, and the Hoosiers by two. It's been eight years since Indiana made it to the Sweet 16. For Indiana fans spoiled by Bob Knight's success, that's an eternity. They were trailing by 17 here in the second half to Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils. They've rallied to take the lead for the first time in the final two minutes, and we have nine seconds on the shot clock, 15 seconds to go. And the last place Indiana wants to make this inbound pass is out towards midcourt. That's when the quick Duke players usually jump into the passing lane. Having trouble, Coverdale, and he has to spend Indiana's last time out. Mike Krzyzewski still has one in his pocket. Welcome back, Matt Gukas. What do you think the two coaches said in those huddles? Well, Mike Krzyzewski is saying, challenge the pass, get up on the inbounds passer, and we got to get a steal here, but no foul. Coverdale having miserable time getting the ball in, almost a backcourt violation. Ewing had his hand up, batted away, but a foul on Duhon. Krzyzewski in disbelief. Indiana again goes to the foul line. Duhon scores. It is so dangerous to be fooling around with the basketball out near midcourt. But A.J. Moyle looked like he got his pocket pick by Chris Duhon right there. Ooh, not, a lot of clean. not a lot of contact at all, but a 79% free throw shooter, A.J. Moyle. Three-point lead, and this one is huge. With 11 seconds left. And Mike Krzyzewski telling his team, if he makes, get it up into the front court area and take a timeout. The star for Indiana off the bench has been Moye. A four-point game. Ewing fires the three. Not there. Williams looks for the three. Oh, he scores and he's fouled. A chance to tie. Unbelievable. The Duke Magic trailing by four and 11 seconds to go. They miss the three, get the long rebound. Williams hits the three, and he is fouled. Oh, this is incredible, and clearly he was fouled. Actually, Mike Krzyzewski at least signaled to his team that he wanted to, the timeout. Daniel Ewing just came down and fired away. And terrific body control by Williams leaning into Jeffrey Newton. I said he would be the wild card in this game, but I never thought it would be on a play like that to let Duke maybe back in. He misses the free throw. Boozer gets the rebound and tipped again. Rebounded by Indiana. The game is over. The Hoosiers with a major upset have defeated the number one team in the nation.